Hello everyone. I'm gonna do some hiking today in Laguna Canyon, California, USA. That's about halfway between Los Angeles and San Diego, closer to the coast. We're gonna be hiking through primarily one formation, the Topanga Sandstone. You can see some behind me. Hopefully it doesn't uh, fall. Anyway, let's go see if we can find some interesting things and uh, get lost out there, shall we? Hey everybody, hiking in Laguna Coast Wilderness Park, surrounded by Topanga Sandstone. I started way down there at the canyon bottom, hiked up to here, it's about 250 feet up. All of it is Topanga Sandstone. Well, what's that? Oh, where did all this sandstone come from? That's a good question. So let's get our bearings. You're looking south. The Pacific Ocean is down this canyon to the west. And if we look east, we see a mountain range. These are the Santa Ana Mountains and are part of the Peninsular Ranges. So it's a pretty simple concept. If you have uplift of mountains, where'd my mountains go? Right here. If those are uplifting, you're gonna have erosion and that erosion material, debris is going to run toward the ocean. So as these mountains were going up, they were getting eroded and all that erosional debris was de being deposited in this basin area. Now what's interesting about all this deposits, like I said, it's all sandstone. It's all same grain size for the most part of sandstone, hundreds of feet thick. So th these are marine deposits. So this was a basin, but this was all completely covered with ocean. Probably the ocean was higher and the land was lower at that time for this all to be deposited with all the sand, which was erosional debris from the Santa Ana Mountains. So fast forward millions of years, ocean level has dropped and the land has uplifted. So as you can see, these sandstone layers here actually run at an angle. You see that? They're not flat anymore. This whole block has been tilted up. You see the angle there? So you can see that block has fallen over. And if you keep that same angle block and kind of carry it over in over here you can see here's the the head of another block that's tilted over right and then there's the head of another block of sandstone tilted over so definite evidence of uplift over here and now the sandstone deposits themselves are going up like, you know being uplifted so now they are prone to erosion and giving off their own erosional debris as sand and that's once again running to the Pacific Ocean to the west there. Yeah, but how do you really know that this was marine deposits of sand like you say? Well, geologists use something called uniformitarianism and it's basically, I need to stop saying that word basically, sorry. In essence, what it is, is geologic processes that are happening today Safe to assume that they've happened millions of years ago, billions of years ago, same processes. So, like I said, these sandstones here are now getting eroded and their debris is being sent to the Pacific Ocean. Well, guess what's out in the Pacific Ocean? It's a huge drainage basin covered in sand, hundreds of feet thick. So, hypothetically, a million years from now, let's say, let's say the the ocean drops or the land uplifts or both, then what would you have exposed? You'd have a bunch of sandstone layers, similar to what I'm hiking through now. And that's how we can make with good certainty this claim that these are marine deposits. All right, I made it to the ridge. So you're looking west, can't really see it, but down there is the Pacific Ocean. This is that drainage basin. This is all Topanga sandstone. And east is the source of all the sandstone, the Santa Ana Mountains, part of the Peninsula Ranges. Now, if you remember, I did an Instagram little story on the Monterey Shale. The Monterey Shale is near the coast, way down there. That's where I, was, I found those concretions in the Monterey Shell. So think about it. Okay, so you got you got the, the source of the erosional debris. This is a drainage basin 
which is primarily sandstone down here. Now, if you think about it, when rivers dump their sediment into the ocean, the first stuff, stuff the first parts of debris that settle out of that flow are the heaviest ones, right? So like the pebbles, the sand, and eventually that all falls out of the water column. But furthest out, you start to get the, the muds and the silts, and those create shale. So hopefully you're drawing the connection here. We have the mountains where the debris came from. Probably at the base of those mountains, you're gonna have a lot of conglomerate and pebbles. And then we turn it into sandstone here, and then further out in this past ocean, right, would be where the muds and the silts would have gotten deposited, and those are the Monterey Shale near the coast. Pretty cool, you can put those all together and tell a story as to how we can say with good certainty that this all was under an ocean at one time. Hey, you want some more evidence to prove that an ocean covered this area? Look what I found. Right there. And you may say, wait, that, come on, that looks, that's just a, just a rock. That's got to just be more Topanga sandstone, right? Looks that way, but I saw a hint of blue coming out of this. I'm not going to lie. I thought, I always have my out for blue around here because I'm always looking for the uh, San Ana Pibreccia, which has some of that uh, blue schist in it. So I saw some blue right here, but on closer examination, those are shell fragments within the Topanga sandstone. These ones over here are awesome. Check this out. Ooh. I guess you could say that this rock is fossiliferous. It's always a bonus when I get to use that word. Well, would you look at that? Shell fragments in the Topanga sandstone. Did you want more evidence that there was an ocean here? Kablam! Right there. Super excited about this. Um, a long time I've been hiking throughout the Topanga sandstone and I've never found fossils in it, which always kind of secretly bothered me. Um, but look at this. Just right here. I mean, this is just like a little like runoff thing that they kind of bulldozed for the water to, to come down, you know, to control erosion. And these rocks that they kicked out are riddled. Look at that right there. See a little scallop. This one, and I got some more. Whoop. I got more over here. Look at these. Look at that. How awesome is that? Okay. And then this one, it's got like fragments right there. The blue, see them? Crazy. And they just kind of chuck these here like no big deal. But come on, people. Fossiliferous, that's twice I've used that word. Let's go. Okay, guys, I, I just found this, this rock. It was just tucked in there, no big deal. But look at this thing, dude. Oh my word. Do you see the shells? Do you see, dare I say, bioturbations? You can see evidence of a lot of life here. Marine life, that is. My word. Am I gonna say it? Am I gonna say it? I might say it. Fossiliferous. All right, super awkward moment. I need to apologize to the young lady on the trail. Uh, sometimes I get a little passionate about geology. Um, specifically, if I find fossils, my gosh. So like I had to like reach out to the closest person that was walking by. I'm like, Did you know there's fossils right here? And she's just like, oh, no, I didn't know. Oh my gosh. I apologize. Uh, I need to keep that reined in a little bit because I creep people out. Okay, so here's a good example of interesting erosional patterns within sandstone. Look at that, huh? It's a full-blown cave. Pretty cool. And we're right back where we started. Thanks for uh, joining me as I hike through the Topanga Sandstone Formation. A formation that was laid down 20 million years ago in a marine environment. I hope you learned something. I know I sure did, and I'm pretty glad I found those fossils so I could say fossiliferous a few more times today. All right, see you next time.